Okay, so now we're gonna put everything together and try to graph uh, this transform cosine function, for example, four, and the transform sine function, for example, five. So what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna fill in these uh, properties of the trig function below before we go ahead and, and generate the graph. So let's uh, fill in these properties. Hopefully it won't take that long. So amplitude depends on what the absolute value of A is, which is negative six. So I'm gonna go with six, has to be positive. The horizontal shift is pi over four to the left. Uh, domain, all real numbers, because there are no restrictions for the sine and cosine function. Um, that can't be said for the other four trig functions though. And that relates, relates back to uh, the first lesson. The maximum value, well, this depends on what the equation of the axis is. So equation of the axis is two, okay? So if the middle is two, uh, let's do dash instead. If the middle value is two and the amplitude is six, then what's the maximum value? The maximum value is, hopefully you get two plus six, and you go from middle and then reach the max is eight. Now the minimum, you go start from the middle of two and go down by six and you get a minimum value of negative four, two minus six. So with the minimum and with the maximum, guess what? That gives us our range. The y values of this wave bounce between negative four and eight. Uh, the vertical translation is two units up because um, we also we actually knew that already uh, because the equation of axis is y equals two. All right, last one, the period. The period uh, since the k value, if you look up, the k value is 4. If the k value is 4, then the period is 2 pi over 4, which is equal to pi over 2. Okay, awesome. So let's put everything, everything together. We shifted, where was it? pi over four to the left and we have a period of pi over two so what i'm gonna do is before i move on i want to find out what a quarter of a period is now we'll do the calculation first and then i'll explain to you why it's such a great idea to find out what a quarter of a period is so what i'm doing right here on the side one quarter period equals well, I'm going to take one quarter and multiply by pi over two. And you get pi over eight. Okay, so if a full period is pi over two, a quarter of a period must be pi over eight. Now, why would I be interested in pi over eight? Or a quarter of a period in this case? Because all I need to graph this wave is five points. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's beautiful symmetry in this wave. I can plot the five points by knowing what the quarter period is. I move a quarter period forward or backwards to plot those five key points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, now this works out really nicely because uh, pi over four is actually uh, a multiple of pi over eight. This is two pi over eight. So the the scaling for the horizontal axis will be pi over eight. So I go pi over four to the left. This is my starting point. So right here. And the first point I plot is going to be a minimum point. Wait a minute. It's a cosine function. Shouldn't it be a maximum? No. It's a minimum because there's a reflection across the x-axis. So in my head, once I see this, once I saw this question, my head did this in my... That's what, that's what I, I'm i going to generate, okay? I had this in my head. My five points, when I connect the dots, it could look, it's going to look something like this. 
the first point I plot is a minimum, then on the equation axis, then maximum, then back on the axis, then minimum. Okay. So, let's go back. All right. So, what was the minimum point? Minimum was negative 4. Okay, so negative power 4. Oh, I forgot to do a, a scaling for uh, my y-axis. Hold on. So, if the minimum is negative 4 and the maximum is 8, you know what? I think a scale of 4 would be perfect. So, let's try one more time. Power 4 to the left, negative 4. Okay. And what was the quarter period? Pi over 8. So it works out very nicely because my my scale for the x-axis is pi over 8. So I go pi over 8 forward, and the key point I'm going to plot is on the equation of the axis, which is 2. Okay, so if, if one box is 4, then half a box is 2. Okay, and then I go another pi over 8 forward. Okay, and I'll reach my next key point, and I'm going to plot 8. A y value of 8 and I'm back on the axis okay and then back at the minimum and it looks beautiful okay without even connecting the dots I see I can see the wave this this is what I this is what I had in my head before I started uh, plotting the five points so now I'm going to connect the five points okay Please don't go beyond the maximum value or go below the minimum value. It's a very common mistake. And there you go. Very beautiful wave. So if you're able to calculate what a quarter of a period is, you'll be able to uh, plot the, four, the five points very nicely. Because think about it. I'll, I'll sketch it in here. This is one period okay one period so if there are five points that you're plotting that make up the full period that allows you to draw the full period or one cycle then each of these points the horizontal separation between each subsequent point should be a quarter period so that's why it's very important to find a quarter period. So you just go quarter period, plot either a minimum, uh, uh, the equation of axis point, or the maximum point. But you, without the knowledge of what a quarter period is, then uh, you'll have a hard time doing this. There's actually another strategy that uh, students use that they plot the first point, okay? We can't avoid that. And then they go a full period forward and plot this point here because they know after one period they must be uh, at the same point as before. And then they just go uh, take uh, these two values and then average and find the middle and then average to find the middle again because the, the halfway point between um, the first point and, the, and the, the middle point is a quarter. So there are different ways to do this but uh, uh, I'm pretty confident with this way that I have here. Okay, so this question was very nice because the the horizontal shift is a multiple of the quarter period. But we're gonna, I believe, in the next example, that's not going to be the case. But we'll see. All right. So uh, once again, we're gonna start off by filling in the properties first. So the amplitude is two. The horizontal shift is pi over 4 left. Okay, the domain is all real numbers. The maximum value, I won't show my diagram this time, but the middle is 2 and the amplitude is 2. So that you have a 2 plus 2 and the minimum is 2 minus 2. The equation of the axis is y equals 2 because you shifted 2 units up. So this is 2 up. And the range is 0 to 4, inclusive. And the period is 2 pi over 3, because you horizontally stretched it by a factor of a third. So uh, the period is a third of what it was before. OK, everything so far so good. Now I'm going to do an extra calculation like I did last time. I'm going to find out what the quarter period is. 
a quarter period equals, so I'm going to take 2 pi over 3, I'm going to take 2 pi over 3 and multiply by a quarter. That will tell me how far my points are separated, my five key points, how far they separated horizontally speaking. Okay, if you do the math, you get pi over 6. <clears throat> okay, so hmm, this is the problem that we didn't encounter last time. So pi over 4 is not a multiple of pi over 6. Okay, pi over 4 is not a multiple of pi over 6. Now when we plot these five key points, it'll be very nice if we're able to make the five points uh, lie on on a, where the in, where the grid lines intersect. Okay, like if I had a key point here, that wouldn't be very good. Okay, it'd be very hard to plot that point. So I want to make sure that my key points, the five key points I'm going to plot to create that one cycle, lie where the grid lines intersect. Okay. So I can make that happen if I um, find the lowest common denominator between 4 and 6. So 4 and 6, the lowest common denominator between 4 and 6 is 12. Okay. So I'm going to change this into 2 pi over 12. Okay. And this one, I'm going to change it to... 3 pi over 12. And now why would I do that? Why would I want a common denominator between the quarter period movement and the horizontal shift? Because now they're ex both expressed as a multiple of pi over 12. And that overcomes the problem that I, I stated earlier. Now I, I can ensure that all five key points will lie where the grid lines intersect. Okay, let's, let's see the magic happen. So this time, it's no longer pi over 8, it's going to be pi over 12, okay? Uh, let's do the y and x, and this time I won't forget to scale my y-axis. So I'm going to go up by 2s, because the minimum is 0, the maximum is 4. Okay, I'm going to plot my first key point. Now before I do it, I just want to show you that in my mind, when I graph these five points, it's going to look something like that. Okay, because this is a sine function that's been reflected about the x-axis. So let's plot that very first point, which is pi over 4 to the left, which is, remember, pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12. It's really nice to express pi over 4 as 3 pi over 12 because that means I'm going 3 boxes to the left because it's 3 times pi over 12. So I'm going to start right here, and the first point is on the equation of axis, which is y equals 2 right here and then I go to a minimum now how many boxes does it shift to the right I have to shift two boxes because the quarter period is 2 pi over 12 and the uh, scaling for the x-axis is 1 pi over 12 so two boxes to the right and I'm at a minimum value why not a maximum because once again it's a sine function that's been reflected across the x-axis. That's what my transformation says. Okay, plot, 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 boom. These last uh, three points have to be here to create that beautiful symmetrical wave. If, if I move these points anywhere else, it, it wouldn't be the, the wave I want. So let's uh, connect the dots, make that beautiful wave. Don't go below the minimum, don't go above the maximum. There you go. That is the graph of that uh, transform sine function. So this one, example five, I would argue is a little harder than example four, uh, just because that uh, the horizontal shift is not a multiple of the period. Um, so you have to find the common denominator, which in this case is 12, and since you express both as a multiple, you express the horizontal shift and the quarter period as a, as a multiple of pi over 12, then every point will be in, uh, uh, where, the in, where the grid lines intersect. Every point you plot will be where the grid lines intersect, and it's going to look like a beautiful graph. Um, if you didn't find the common denominator, you'd be very hard-pressed to, to, to scale the x-axis properly.
okay? Um, and your graph, it wouldn't be entirely wrong. I guess you can still approximate the points, but the key points won't be where the grid lines intersect and, and uh, your graph won't be as pretty. Okay, so that's uh, transformations of trig functions in a nutshell.